Good morning. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Um, for those of you who want to know about my history, um, mathematics in school this year has a, an article called 40 Years of ICT and Mathematics. That's 40 years pushing water uphill. So the first issue really is, uh, this is slide two, learn the lessons from the past. Um, in the pre-chip age, the, the uh, tranny age, the 70s, calculators came on the scene. It took basically about 30 years for us to come to a stabilized view about where calculators should fit in the school curriculum in England. And that is they should be taught how to use them in years five and six, the top end of primary school. That took an enormous political struggle. It took popular flack from the Daily Mail and various quarters. So just beware that you're not going to bring about change. It's been tried. Lots of us in this room have been trying it over the years. We've lugged many, many reports with us, which have also seen uh, death. Um, I put a few up here. It's not worth dwelling on too long. Look at what's been done before. Don't start from fresh. Wonderful thing, people here from the National STEM Center. A lot of the stuff from the white heat of the mathematical modeling period, uh, Nuffield, um, SMP uh, 16 to 19, all that stuff is, is being digitized and archived. You don't have to reinvent it. The problem is you won't win because the buggers will grind you down. So let's go back one to actually implementing the change to STEM, to CBM, use STEM as the vehicle. I go from the rear uh, or do a Nelson, you know, split the, split the opposition. So we've had calls to arms and we have mobilized. Um, we are going to remember World War I, and this is not a trivial point, but it was a real crux of technology. Tanks, aircraft, heavy guns. Okay, people were dispendable, awful. Horses, the, the wonderful thing there, but it was a technological beginning. World War II was a scientific war, and our scientific base came out of that getting together to try to make not just a few pilots in the air, the whole infrastructure that kept them going. The Sputnik effect tripled the number of, of physics PhDs in the US. Um, the challenge of the chip threatened the UK economy and many other economies, you know, paperless society, cashless society, the rest of it. Mrs. Thatcher led us to victory on that one. We had a microelectronics education program for schools. We had Ken Baker funding half the price of getting computers into schools. We had a BBC program for homes. It was a wonderful period, and we can do it again. We know how to do it. Now we are in a period of global economic warfare. It's a skills crisis, and it's slow death. There's no immediate threat, no clear and present danger. Is the answer rocket science? Well, interestingly, uh, although there are some deep backwoodsmen around, Michael Gove, our education secretary, has had some very interesting things to say about innovation. A look at a couple of his speeches. I've given you one. Uh, one he gave to the Royal Society recently, which, where more people should learn calculus, but we don't quite know how. I think you've given a suggestion how to do it. I'll give you others. So our moral from this, my, my talk is don't get caught in the educational skirmish. Uh, back the right side to win the war. And the right side to win the war is we need, your country needs economic survival. We need bright kids and innovative kids who are switched on to wanting to know about science and maths and engineering and technology. And the key point there is Mr. Google. Eric Schmidt at his McTaggart lecture at the Edinburgh Festival said we do a lousy job in technological education in the UK and we didn't used to. What's wrong? Interestingly, Google has a very strong influence on this Britain government. I won't go into why, but you can find out for yourself if you're interested. Um, we're just waiting to find what is the government response to this. We have a very small scale one, it's called Behind the Screen, and it's to try to get uh, some kids doing more programming at GCSE <coughs> level. But it's a very small scale answer. We're waiting for the big one, but it must come soon. It's, we have a, a UK trade and industry, we have a, a, a policy for growth. We just have to wait for the politicians to get their act together and encourage them. And it's absolutely the right time now. I mentioned Raspberry Pi, mentioned, uh, only one more slide, don't worry, only four slides, minute per slide. Uh, okay, so that's Raspberry Pi down there, by the way. So it's absolutely the right time. We've written the strategy for them, that's the professional associations and the school heads, it's called Systemic. All they have to do is uh, claim it as their own. We don't mind, uh, and that's fine, uh, but they've got the solution there. 
But the key thing, too, is that we can latch the imagination of kids with what they have at home. Does anybody know what those are? Anyone got one? Yeah? Please take a photograph. Yes, thanks. Um, <laughs> so what's in there? Anyone know? Six LEDs. That's all it is. What's in here? Infrared camera. That's the main thing. It's an infrared camera which knows exactly where you are. There are accelerometers in there. The main thing is it knows position. So on the back of my little elephant here, there's a Wiimote jumping up and down on top of a bar, looking at an Inspire. On the slope here, you can see, just this one second, four slides, four crossing. A slope. It's a slope. It's a toboggan. It's a kid on a toboggan. It's, it's uh, Sophie. But actually, with a video camera, everyone's got access to a video camera. We've got free software that enables us to work out the speeds and accelerations from that data, even the friction on the toboggan. We can also do the speed of a fast bowler. So things that kids like doing. You can put a Garmin or a GPS on the back of a buggy, and then you can find your route on Google Map, and you can see the garden um, the route of my radio control buggy around there. Isn't that great? And you can jump up and down with an iPhone in your pocket, and you can use your GPS and your accelerometer and all the rest of it. It's just all there to be grasped. And we're the people who can make it happen. So let's go and do it. Great, thank you.